What's up YouTube, this is Demkeys and this is gonna be another AI tutorial. In this tutorial, you're gonna learn how to make the enemy shoot, run and hide. Basically, our enemy is gonna be patrolling the area and once the enemy spots the player, the enemy is gonna shoot at the player and then run to hide. The running is pretty much a panic mode. So the enemy is gonna start running and hide behind pillars and be moving around until it is at a safe distance from our player. And once it is at a safe distance from our player, it's gonna resume its regular patrolling until it spots the enemy again. So let's begin. We're gonna start by setting up our level. I'm gonna speed up this process. What I'm gonna do is create a cube and make a couple of duplicates. One of those duplicates will be the ground, four of them will be walls, and the remaining will all be pillars. So we have set up our level. Next, click layers, edit layers, and add two layers. One is player and the second is obstacle. And now select all the other objects that you created except for the ground and set their layer to obstacle. All right, next let's create our player. Click game object, 3D object, capsule. Bring the capsule close to the ground and let's make it a little tall. Next, make the main camera a child of the capsule and change its position to zero on all axes and then reposition it so that it is just above the capsule and a little forward. Rename the capsule to player and set the layer property to player. Next add a rigid body component to the player and under constraints freeze the rotation on the x, y and z axes. Next create a script called player move script 06. Open it up in mono develop. All right first type using unity engine.ui. Next create a public float move force private rigid body r body public int hp public slider hp bar. Then in the start method r body equals get component rigid body this is gonna add a reference to the rigid body component attached to our player next float h equals input dot get access raw horizontal multiplied by move force then just copy this and in the second one it should be float v and the axis should be vertical then our body dot velocity equals transform dot transform vector we need to do this because our player is going to be rotating as well h on the x axis zero on y axis and v on the z axis then hp bar dot value is equal to hp save the script go back to unity set the move force to 30 hp to 100 and for the slider click game object ui slider double click the slider in the hierarchy and just change its location to let's say the top left corner of the screen or in this case the top left corner of the canvas and then set the minimum value of the slider to zero the max value to 100 check whole numbers and then click player and under the hp bar field just drag and drop the slider. Next click the main camera and add a script. Call it cam lux script 06. Open it up in mono develop. Here public float rotation force public transform player and that's it. Those are the variables we need. In the update function type float mouse x equals input dot get access mouse x. Remember to add this space between mouse and x otherwise it's not going to work. Multiplied by rotation force. Copy this line and in the second line name it mouse y and change the axis to mouse y as well. Then transform dot rotate negative mouse y on the x axis 0 on y 0 on z that's going to handle our camera's up down rotation and when the mouse is moved left to right we want the entire player to rotate so player dot rotate 0 on x and mouse x on y and 0 on z save the script go back to unity and set the rotation force to 2 and under the player field drag and drop the player now real quick let's just play the game and see if this works all right, so this is our player. Now let's add the enemy. Create a capsule, place it near the ground. This also, we should make it a little tall. Rename the capsule to enemy. Add a rigid body component and under constraints, freeze the rotation on X, Y, and Z, just like we did for the player. And then add a script called enemy AI 06. Open it up in mono develop. All right, public float, walk, move force. Public float, run, move force. Public float, move force. Public layer mask, what is layer? Public layer mask, what is obstacle? Private rigid 
rigid body our body public float wall check distance and private vector 3 move direction for now these are the variables that we need we'll create the remaining as we go along now create a function called vector 3 choose direction within the function create system dot random ran equals new system dot random next int i equals ran dot next and the two parameters are 0 and 3 it's going to give you a random number between 0 and 3 it could also be 0 or 3 next vector 3 temp equals new vector 3 all right so if i is equal to 0 then temp should be transform dot forward else if i is equal to 1 temp should be negative transform dot forward which is transform dot back then make two copies of this else if statement and this one should be if i is equal to 2 and the next one should be if i is equal to 3 so if i is equal to 2 then temp should be transform dot right if it is equal to 3 temp should be negative transform dot right so that's transform dot left and finally return temp okay i just remembered a variable that i forgot to create that's private bool target found all right next create a void function called look for target also create another void function called move within look for target you have to call move and the next line should be target found equals physics dot raycast the ray should be cast from the enemy's position in the enemy's forward direction and the distance should be mathf dot infinity and the layer that we are looking for is whatever we set under what is player all right before we proceed let me explain what choose direction does choose direction is basically going to choose a random direction for us it could be any one of these four and look for target is gonna move the enemy and also look for the player at the same time using physics.raycast under move type our body dot velocity equals move direction multiplied by move force and then if physics.raycast the ray should be cast from the enemy in the enemy's forward direction and the distance of this raycast should be wall check distance and the layer that we are looking for this time is what is obstacle so if this returns true that means our enemy has reached to a wall and so it now needs to change directions so move direction equals choose direction here we are calling our choose direction function which is a vector 3 so it's going to return a vector 3 as well then transform dot rotation equals quaternion dot look rotation move direction here we are basically changing the rotation from whatever the current rotation is to whatever direction we specify okay so our move function is now complete in the start function add a reference to the rigid body component set the value for move direction so that we have a random direction to start with and then change the rotation of our enemy so that it is looking in whatever direction we specify also set move force to walk move force i have misspelled move force over here so i'm going to go back to where i created the variable and hit f2 to rename it now in the update method if target found else look for target now create a shoot function name it shoot another void hide and then void run to hide all right so if the target is found then call shoot and if the target is not found then continue looking for the target all right now before we continue we need to create a couple of variables public float shoot rate private float shoot timestamp public player object public float distance from target public float safe distance that's it for now now in the update method type distance from target equals vector 3 dot distance and we want to measure the distance from transform dot position which is our enemy's position to player object dot transform dot position which is our player's position also so we need to add another variable private bool shot fired initially it should be false now in the shoot function if not shot fired remember to add this exclamation mark then player object dot get component we are looking to get the player move script 06 and then we want to access the hp field in that script minus equals 30 and also once the shot has been fired move force should now be equal to run move force shot fired should be equal to true and we want to change our our move direction again so move direction equals choose direction and then change our enemy's rotation towards that direction okay I forgot one step there should be another if statement here if time dot time is greater than shoot timestamp then all of these lines should be executed so just add all of these lines into the new if statement and finally one more line shoot timestamp equals time dot time plus shoot rate okay so this is if the shot has not been fired else meaning if the shot has been fired then call hide okay before we continue let me explain what's happening if the target is found then the shoot function will be called within the shoot function we'll first check if shot fired is equal to true or false if it is false that means the shot has not been fired yet and so we need to execute this code this if statement is basically a way of setting the shoot rate so if the current time is greater than the shoot timestamp which will initially be zero then we want to reduce the player's hp we want to change the move force to run move force because now the enemy is going to be in panic 
write more and it's going to start running. Short fire has to be true so that the next time around this if statement is not going to be executed. And then we also need to change the direction, which is why we wrote these two lines. And finally, we have to update the value of shoot timestamp using our shoot rate value and the current time. So this is if the shot has not been fired. But if the shot has been fired, then the enemy now needs to hide. And so we're going to call our hide function. All right. So within the hide function, if distance from target is less than safe distance, then run to hide else move force equals walk force shot fired equals false target found equals false and finally again we have to change the direction okay so what's happening here is now that the enemy is in a panic mode if the distance between the target and the enemy is less than safe distance that means the enemy still needs to continue running in order to get to a safe distance so run to hide will be called but if the enemy is already at a safe distance from the player then the move force will be changed back to walk force shot fired fired will be changed to false, shot fired will be false, target found will be false, and we also need to change our direction again. So this basically means that the enemy is now going to return back to its patrol mode. Okay, before we type anything in the run to hide function, make a copy of the choose direction function and rename that function to choose direction LR and make some changes in it. Ran.next, the parameters should be 0 and 1, and you can remove the last two else if conditions. And here, if i is equal to 0, temp should be transform.write. If i is equal to 1, temp should be negative transform.write. And finally, the function should return temp. Now, we need to create a few more variables, which are going to be used in our run to hide function. First of all, public float run turn rate. Next, private float run turn timestamp. And finally, public float run turn distance check. Now, in the start method, we want to set the value of run turn rate randomly. So type run turn rate equals random dot range. And the two parameters should be 0.5f minimum and 1.5f maximum. Next, in our run to hide function, type rbody.velocity equals move direction multiplied by move force. If time.time .time is greater than run turn timestamp, then if physics.raycast, the ray should be cast from the enemy's position, but this time it should be cast in transform.write, and the max distance should be run turn distance check, and the layer that we are looking for for is what is obstacle. If this returns true, then move direction should be negative transform dot right and we have to change our enemy's rotation so it is facing in that direction. Then make a copy of this if statement and type else if physics dot ray cast the ray should be cast from the enemy's position but this time it should be cast in negative transform dot right and the rest of the values are the same. If it returns true then move direction should be positive transform dot right and then we also have to set the rotation. Else move direction should be chosen by our choose direction LR function and finally again set the rotation and then run turn rate equals random dot range so we are again changing the run turn rate it should be between 0.5 f and 1.5 f and run turn timestamp equals time dot time plus run turn rate all right so now save the script all right so let me explain what's happening in the run to hide function first of all we are going to set the velocity because while the enemy is hiding the move function is not going to be called but rather the run to hide function is going to be called so we need to set the velocity over here and then just the way we had shoot rate we also have a run turn rate because the enemy is going to randomly turn in different directions so that it can go and hide in between the pillars the run rate is going to be set randomly from the very beginning as you can see in the start function and also each time run to hide is called and this if statement is executed the run turn rate will be changed again to another random value between these two values and then finally just like we did for the shoot timestamp we are updating the value now what's happening here is a ray is going to be cast from the enemy in the enemy's right side if it returns true that means there is a wall on the enemy's right side and so the enemy should turn left instead and that's why we are changing the direction to negative transform dot right now in the next else if statement the ray is being cast in the left direction and so if that returns true that means there is some sort of obstacle on the left side so the enemy should turn right instead and then finally we have added an else so if both of these fail, then it's just going to pick a random direction to go in and set our enemy's rotation in that direction. I don't need to explain the choose direction LR because you've already understood how choose direction works. It's pretty much the same thing. All right. So for those of you that find this confusing, I created a flowchart. The flowchart doesn't follow the exact symbols of an actual flowchart. It's just something that I created for my understanding when I was working on this logic. So I'm going to post a link to a picture of this flowchart just in case you 
you want to take a look at it. Maybe after you look at that and then you look at the code, it might make more sense because you'll understand the entire flow. All right, so hit save and go back to Unity. And now let's set the values for our variables. First of all, you have walk move force, which should be 10, run move force 30. Move force will be set to one of these two values, so no need to set it. What is player should be the player layer. What is obstacle should be the obstacle layer. This wall check distance is the wall check distance in regular patrol mode, just when the enemy is looking for the target, not when the enemy is running. So keep that in mind. This should be five. The shoot rate can be one. Drag the player object into the player object field. Distance from target will be set from the code. Safe distance. Let's set it to a hundred so that we can see the enemy running around and turning for a longer period of time before he goes back to patrol mode. Run turn rate will be set automatically. Run turn distance check should be 20. And make sure you have the enemy selected and the transform gizmo toggle should be local, not global, so that we can actually see the handles changing direction. And finally, hit play. Now, as you can see, the enemy spotted me and then started running in different directions. It's even running in between pillars. As you can see, the code is not flawless. It's, it's very buggy because I haven't added validations. But the enemy is actually running in between the pillars and, and hiding. Now stop the game and change safe distance to 50. Now run the game again and this time when the enemy gets 50 units away from the player, it'll go back into patrol mode. Let's test this out. As you can see, the enemy started running, but then stopped. Let's chase the enemy. As you can see, since the distance is not past 50 yet, the enemy is still in panic mode. But once the distance crosses 50, the enemy goes back to regular patrol. Now, if you remember, I told you earlier that run turn rate is going to be set randomly and the number will be between 0.5 and 1.5. The benefit of this is that when the enemy is running, the next time that the enemy is going to turn left or right is random. It's not a fixed time. So yeah, that's it. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you'd like to watch more tutorials, you can click in the top left corner of the screen and in the top right is a link to my music channel where I post music that I make in my free time. In the bottom left corner you have a preview for a small game that I made. The links for the project and the game build are in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time.